Hi everyone, my name is Gene and welcome to the Curious Crafter channel. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to make this little house. I used many different techniques during this build, some of them you might be familiar with, but I also tried many new things. I had to experiment a lot and I'm really, really happy with the results that I got. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please remember to like, share and subscribe. Enjoy guys. The first part of this build is to create the base structure. The base structure is made out of cardboard, which is what I had available. I give you all the dimensions, although you don't have to make it exactly the same as I did. You can adapt it as you want. For the windows, I decided not to make the window frames or the glass. I just wanted to frame it with uh, wooden beams. For the front and back walls, I wanted to make some sloped walls on the sides and also I wanted the roof to curve a little bit. For the front wall, I also framed the door with some wooden beams and also created some supporting structure of wooden beams. All of this I then glued together using hot glue. I put some on the inside just to make it a little bit stronger so that it will last. And this would basically form all the walls for the little house. Next, I wanted to make a chimney on the center line of the house at the back. I just made a design as high as I wanted and put it at the center, glued it on and made a little box. And this is quite nice because later on I can actually adapt this and decorate the inside of the house as well. For the roof, I wanted to have a wooden beam that runs along the center line of the roof on the outside. So I had to cut some spaces where this beam will fit into and then glue three pieces together to make the thickness that I wanted. Because I wanted the roof to be removable, I had to create some A-frames where the wooden beam would be connected to and this will also then support the roof plates when it's not on the house. So on the one side the wooden beam is actually supported by the walls but not on the other side because of the chimney. But it wasn't a big problem because the roof will actually extend over the walls and this would then support the roof. I just made some beams between these A-frames just to make it a little bit stronger to support the roof. Although I don't think this is necessarily needed because the roof itself will actually create some structure too. For the roof I used two pieces of cardboard that I orientated so that I can easily bend it in the curvature that I want to. I pre-bent these and then I glued them onto the A-frames using hot glue. I wanted to get a lot of curvature but it was quite difficult to do. I would suggest that you really focus at this point to get a little bit more curvature because it really easily disappears as you add more layers to this house. I added some hot glue everywhere just to make sure it's completely secure. Then I cut some holes where I want the chimney to fit in and now you can see how this fits onto the house. The bottom of the chimney was filled up using a piece of cardboard and then at the top I added just a little bit more detail just for some added looks. Everywhere along the edges of the cardboard I filled it up with some hot glue just to make it a little nicer and not look like cardboard and then I cut away any excess pieces. Around each corner I made vertical wooden beams and I orientated the wooden beams so that the tubes inside the cardboard would be aligned with the direction I want the grain to go. And also along each of these edges I fill it up with hot glue. I did the same around the windows. I created little pieces of cardboard that's aligned in the direction that I wanted the wooden grain to go. And then I filled these up with hot glue around the edges as well. I continued with this around all the edges. At the front door I added a little bit of a roof overhang and then I continued just to fill up all the grooves where I don't want the cardboard to look like cardboard. I created a little bit of a, a window on the one side of the roof and then added some wooden strips with the tubes aligned in the direction of the wood grain.
on the one side of the roof I also added a hole where I wouldn't put any tiles or anything so you just cut a lot of tiles don't cut the tiles exactly the same size just cut a lot of them and you just start gluing them on I used the bigger ones, then smaller ones, and then I tried to create like an overlap for each of them and I just ignored the space where the, I want the hole to be. I bent all the little roof tiles a little bit upwards just to give a little bit more detail so that it doesn't look so new, looks a little bit older and will add some looks to it. And this I just continued around the other edge as well. top part of the roof I created little cap tiles and then I did a similar thing on the roof overhang across the front door. Now you can see the final house after I've added all the tiles. Across the hole I would still add wooden uh, planks but this will come later. So the next step is to create the bricks around the bottom edge. I used egg cartons for this, which I cut into little pieces and they paint quite nicely because they give a nice texture. I started in the middle of the windows because I wanted it to be symmetric and then I started with one line, just add more and when there's holes I would just fill these up with little small pieces. You just have to be careful not to get too much glue spill over so that you have to remove it uh, in the end. And you continue with this all around the edges, all around the corners of the chimney, uh, between the front doors and around the back, everywhere where you want it to be. I also added some bricks on the top of the chimney and just made sure that there was a few that stood out. And this is how the final look is before I start painting. Now that the house is done, we can start painting it. I started with quite a dark brown color that I used as a base coat. The idea is to just cover all the shadowy parts of the building except the walls, which I would do a different color. I also did the beams, a dark brown color, but this is quite unnecessary because I used a different base coat in the end. I wanted to do something different with the beams. So the key, especially on the roof tiles, you want to get this paint into all the little crevices and cracks between the roof tiles because this would form the shadowy parts of it. You want to cover every part of the cardboard structure so that it looks a dark brown. And then you will add layers onto this of different colors later. The next part is to create an orange color with some brown in it, which would form the base coat for every wooden beam. I would suggest that this would be quite a bright yellow color because you would cover this with some brown later on. For the walls I used a white base coat and I just covered all the walls and also the bricks with this white base coat. Next I mixed up quite a dark red color. This would be the second layer for the roof tiles. I started to put most of the color on let's say the bottom edges of the roof tiles and then mix it up so that it gets darker and darker towards the top. Once it dried out it was quite red all over but if you look at it carefully it's more red towards the bottom. For the top beam I also added a base coat but I had to do a few layers of this. For the roof tiles, I added a second layer of a brighter red with some white in it. And then I dried out the brush and blended this color in. This worked out really well for me. I 
exactly the same on the front roof. You just have to be careful not to get some reds on uh, the other parts of the building at this point. After you painted the wooden beams, you have to make sure that all the lines are clear. And I had many experiments in this part. It was quite difficult to get the wooden beams. I just decided to hack these little wooden beams to bits. You can really add a lot of holes and tears and things in this. Even if it bundles up a little bit, it looks nice. So the more of these grooves you get, the better. You want to align it with the wood grain direction. This is the wood grain that you have in the end. And then you would cover this with a coat of brown. And you make sure it has to go all the way in, especially on the darker parts. And then you would stroke it once or twice across the top just to get a final coating of the wood grain. Just make sure for the windows and doors, you also coat on the inside. And then if the paint covered any of the lines for the sides of the wooden beams, I would just then cut them again. And you do this along all the beams across the corners and you can really go to town on this. You don't have to be careful. The more cuts you make in the wooden beams, the better they look in the end. Because the painting actually covers up a lot of this. So the more you hack it to bits, the better it looks. You can also try to use your fingers to skew the grain a bit and this will also add some character to it. You do the same for the top beam on the roof. This is quite difficult because this is covered with a hot glue so it's quite difficult to cut into that but if you play around with it you'll be able to do it as well. I usually add a lot of paint at the beginning and then I just add it into the little holes and things and then I stroke it around uh, so that it's much thinner in the end and I have this nice lines that appear and the base coat that shines through which looks really well. Now you can see how the beams turned out in the end. To create the walls, I just poked a lot of holes in it and started to make some cracks. I used many different tools to create this, especially on the walls. You uh, lose a lot of this detail if you add paint later on. So I added a dark wash to this just to make sure that all those little holes are quite pronounced or have some shadows in them. And then I covered this with a white base coat. I don't want these um, black spots or black areas to show up. Then I added a little bit of a brown color, a brown yellow color that I blended along the walls. I added more color on the edges, which is where walls would be dirty or have some shadows and things like that, so it looked really well. I added a lot of it around the edges and then I blended it with a clean, wet paintbrush. You can do this around all the edges. You don't have to be too careful. The more holes you add and the more cracks and things, the better it looks for me anyway. The paint will cover this very quickly, so you have to be careful of painting the white and things over it, not adding too much paint to cover these holes and so on. In some areas the black wash wasn't enough. I wanted to get it into the cracks especially, but even between the bricks I wanted a little bit more darker colors, so I added just black paint in there. The black wash was actually absorbed by these cardboard egg carton bricks. So you do the same again, you just go along all the edges, you just add some of this brown, 
and then you blend it in with a clean wet brush. The next step is to paint all the bricks. I wanted to go for a dark grey colour, which I just carefully painted over the top of the bricks, not to get any of this grey into the crevices between the bricks, which I wanted to be black. I just uh, mixed up a dark grey colour and then covered all the bricks around the edges with it. This is like the base coat for the bricks. At this point you have to be really careful not to get the grey colour onto the rest of the building, like the wooden beams or the walls. But if you do, don't worry too much, you can just quickly clean it up with some water and a clean brush. I added two wooden beams that I made separately onto this hole that I created. It looked to me like a little repair. I added some character. These were also the nicest looking wooden beams that I made. These, especially these ones, look like they were crumbled up a little bit. Then I started with the dry brushing. I added a little bit of white and to make sure I didn't have too much on it and then covered all the bricks with it. This really makes a big difference. It highlights all the edges and it makes the bricks a lot lighter. I dry brushed all along the walls and especially wanted to highlight some of the edges which um, helps to pronounce these edges and it shows me light shines. I also did this on the wooden beams which adds some aging effects and the same on the roof tiles. Uh, especially every edge of the roof I wanted to have a nice highlight with the dry brushing. It's quite easy to do this. I actually was quite nervous to do it at the beginning but once you get the hang of it you will find it really makes a big difference. I added some soot to the chimney, so I just mixed up that grey colour again and I added some uh, in the inside and then also did some dry brushing around the corners and then I found it wasn't dark enough so I added some black and did the same, painted the inside and then dry brushed the outside. And this is what the house looks like after the painting and the dry brushing. All the painting of the house is now done. You can see that the dry brushing really highlights all the edges of the roof tiles and it makes the wood look a little bit older. It highlights the edges and then it looks like the suit built up around this chimney. The next step I really experimented a lot with. I wanted to create moss but I didn't have any moss available. So I used some maize or cornmeal. It's quite a coarse flour of corn and then you mix this with some podge glue and green color. And it starts out as this almost looks like wasabi at the beginning and you would just apply this on the different areas where you want it to go. So then I would manipulate this and make some holes in it and fluff it up a bit and once it dries out it actually creates a lot of depth and becomes a lot coarser so when it's wet this mixture would be more fluffy or like porridge when it dries out it becomes more coarse. So I just used a toothpick or a skewer stick to manipulate all these little pieces where I wanted the moss to be and this worked out really well. I was really happy with this result. The color is much lighter when it's still wet and as it gets dry you will see that it becomes much darker. So guys now you can see what the final house looks like. When the moss dries out it's a little bit darker than when you first apply it. You get lots of detail with a fine grain and it's actually rock solid. It also doesn't change color over time, I've watched it now for a few weeks so I'm really happy with this result. I'm also really really happy with the wooden beams. This was a big success for me. I tried many different things and I got so much detail with this uh, technique. Even little blotches made little knots and things and the wooden grain is clear. I really like this result as well. The walls and the bricks were also a success for me. 
I was concerned with the cardboard, but the cracks and everything turned out really well. And I got lots of detail on the bricks as well. Guys, if you want me to decorate the house on the, on the inside as well, please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you wanted to support this channel, I would really appreciate it. There are a few different ways that you can do that. First of all, check out the description for any links to things like Patreon or Amazon. If you support this channel through Amazon, uh, this channel will receive a small percentage of whatever you buy and uh, it would not cost you anything more than you would normally pay on Amazon. Thanks guys, thanks for watching.